there, folks. Welcome. Thanks for visiting with us. You know, reading the account of the Lord's last few days on earth reveals some fascinating things about Jesus, about the apostles, about God's plan for us. Let's look at a few verses in chapter 1 of Acts. To the disciples, Jesus presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus had already spoken about the kingdom before, right? Before the cross. In fact, in Mark's gospel, his first words are, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe. But he talked about a lot of other things too during his public ministry. But now according to the Acts of the Apostles, following the resurrection, the focus of his teaching was exclusively on the kingdom. Now, that's got to be significant, right? Just before ascending to the Father, he gives them instructions not to leave Jerusalem, which must have been tempting for them because, let's face it, it was a pretty hostile environment at the time. But the Lord tells them to wait, to stay and to wait for the promise of the Father. Then he goes on to say, John baptized with water, but before many days, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, this baptism with the Holy Spirit has to be vital to God's plan. It's mentioned not only in the Acts of the Apostles, but all four Gospels. All right, so back to the Ascension and the disciples who, you know, much like in so many accounts in the Gospels, they don't quite get it, right? They don't quite get what the Lord's saying. So he's been talking to them about the kingdom and telling them about the next step in the plan. And their response is, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, makes sense, right? To a certain extent. Jesus has been talking to them about the kingdom and now, uh, and they know he can do it, right? They've seen him for three years. They saw him heal thousands of people, cast out demons, multiply food, walk on water, raise the dead. Of course he could restore the kingdom. But their focus, it's off a little. It's too small. It differs from the plan in two major ways. First of all, the Lord doesn't intend to merely restore the kingdom to Israel. The plan is to establish the kingdom of God worldwide and to include the Gentiles as full-fledged member in this kingdom. Secondly, and this is perhaps the most amazing part of it, he plans to do that through them. He doesn't say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do this. Okay, step back, boys. Watch me go to work. Instead, he says, you, my disciples, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, first in Jerusalem and then to the ends of the earth. That's the plan. <laughs> Sounds crazy, right? But that's God for you all over again. He chose to make them essential to establishing the kingdom, essential to the fulfillment of his plan. And he wants us, you and I, to be part of the equation. He wants you to be part of the equation. The kingdom has already been established. Now he wants you and I to help spread it and strengthen it. And that is what Pentecost means. And that's what Pentecost started. And that's what God wants it to mean in your life and mine, to equip and empower us to further and strengthen the kingdom of God on earth. I'm Marcel. On behalf of Linda and I, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bless you.